Riders ready, watch the gate. Hey, so we got a new one, boys. What do we got? Got a whole new program. Got a new guy. Guy I've been after for a a guy I've been after for quite a while, but uh, you know, his 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 tech limit is uh, we're right at the tech limit right now. (laughs) Dude, I could I could walk with that guy, can't I? Yeah, he's 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 definitely in your moto. (laughs) That's right. He signed up in your class. Hey, let's bring this special guy in. I want to tell you, uh, uh, there's a couple stories I want to tell him about him. But one thing is, is uh, he's f- everyone I've talked to about him. They always say the same thing. What a super nice guy. What a cool guy. Um, you know, just just a, a, a great guy. So uh, our special guest, our special guest this week on the Dirty Knobs podcast is none other than Mr. Clint Miller. Oh wow! All right, nice. Wow. All right, there he goes. Yeah. Oh, and dude's pushing <laughs> okay. Yes, <laughs> Mister Technically Challenged, right here. <laughs> you, we were just saying you're in the same moto as EC. That's right. <laughs> That's right, Mister Clint Miller. Yeah, up, guys, it's been a while. Yes, sir. <laughs> I love you it. sure haven't changed much. Well, I don't know about that, but hey, can you take your shirt off and do the old Torker commercial? The corner, not not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> he would he would not be happy, <laughs> and I'd be embarrassed. Come on now, Father Father Time has had his way. Over oh, yeah. fifty and feeling yeah. nifty. Come on. So listen, how are you guys? Thank you for having me on. Oh, dude, it's a it's an honor and a privilege to have the world champion Clint Miller on, yeah. on, on podcast. Yeah, and uh, I was just telling the fellas that uh, you know I talked to a few people and let let them know that you were going to come on and and everybody says the same thing. Clint Miller, oh, he's the nicest guy. Uh, and I just remember, uh, and I'll talk about this later. Not always the nicest uh, this guy. Is tr- this is oh. true. I, I can't oh. even imagine where you're going to go with this, but whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah i I'm, can't I wait to hear, to hear that, that. yeah <laughs> well jv give us the rundown on mr clint miller all right let's see what i got here tell him jv, tell him, JV. <laughs> clint if i if any of this is wrong just shout it out no i probably wouldn't even remember okay good better <laughs> yet on. better yet <laughs> <laughs> then go ahead and jv you can make yeah, some here shoot we go. Now. that's right <laughs> All right, started racing in 1975. Uh, says here, uh, Wikipedia, of course, uh, competitive years from 1976 to 1984. We all know, nickname Miller Time. Uh, first win was as a 14 novice at the NBA Grands. Yeah. You, tur- you turned pro at 15, and yeah. your first professional win, you wow. won a whopping 17 bucks. That sounds about right. <laughs> Past Dude. sponsors, very, uh, I'll tell you what, respectable here. JMC, DG, GJS, Torker, Kuhara, Cycle Pro, GHP, and CW. Uh, yeah. Legend says yeah. that you actually retired when you were asked to join CW because Pete was leaving to race for Haro, and you came back and raced for a little bit on CW. I think I might have got Roger might have got me to one race. Okay. Hey. Thinking, it's it's over. And we're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can only whip those ponies so much. Exactly. <laughs> uh okay, fact. Most sponsors were about a year, but uh Mike and Eric, what was the longest sponsor Clint had of the ones I mentioned? You mm. asking me? I'm yeah. A- I'm going to say Kuhara. I'm going to say JMC. Nope. Torker, three years. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Uh, 1984 Pro Cruiser National Number 3. 
1983 IBM XF Pro uh, World Champion. Class of 2005 Hall of Fame. You were in 10 different articles in magazines and in around 16 different covers. Sounds where good. you were in. With European yeah. covers, yeah. Probably yeah. about right. Yeah. That's a lot of covers, man. Yeah. yeah. I tell you what. Harry's got me beat. What he, what's he up to, 33? I think so. So he says. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. Let's call him up right now and ask him. Yeah. No. <laughs> I will tell you, ma'am, the craziest stat you said, JV. Yeah. Was racing 14 novice and turning pro at 15. Yeah. Uh, expert for expert is totally over overrated <laughs> that's the needs vertical that? learning curve There's, it's straight up that's crazy dude 14 novice yeah. to pro i sure got my ass kicked for quite a while oh my gosh <laughs> what was oh, I listen thinking? when you win 14 no, when you win 14 novice at the grand nationals it's all downhill after that man. yeah just pro Unbelievable. <laughs> what grant what grands were those Clint? man i want to say it was had to be NBA, right? NBA. It, it was it was NBA, but I'm trying to think. It was down south, Orange County area. Wow. I don't remember the exact location. Didn't they do one at um, was it Lions Drag Strip? That might be it. I don't know. That might be it. What? He doesn't know because he was only 14. That's right. <laughs> yeah, my dad had to drive me. <laughs> now, wild. now that when he was 15 and pro, he could drive himself. That's right. No, he wow. still had to drive me for a while. As soon as I turned 16, it was like, here's the keys, here's the money, don't screw up. <laughs> yes, sir. Wow. He was still sporting the flat top. He was still in the Army as far as he was concerned. So I didn't mess with my folks. It was like, nope, you do what they say. But my dad was the same way. He wrecked the flat top, the, you know, from, yeah. from the day he got out of the Army until – the day he passed, he had a flat yeah. top on. Same with my father. Yeah. Wow. You, Clinton, you won that race in East Irvine. Oh, okay. That sounds about right. East Irvine, California. Okay. November 28th. What yeah. year? JV? Nin 1976. Wow. Yeah, a long time ago. That was a seven-foot trophy. I bet, it, I bet it was at Lions Drag Strip, man, because that was in Orange County in that area. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember who you raced back then, Clint? Not a, not oh. a clue. And and were you on? Were you were riding for JMC or were you riding for a bike shop? What was going on back then? I think that was like, if I remember correctly, I had a JMC jersey on. I think riding a Cook Brothers. <laughs> that was about the only frame I didn't break. <laughs> wow, that was before the JMC frames. Oh, yeah, you were riding. It was Jim Melton Cyclery. It was the bike Yeah, show. yeah. That's right. That's wow. what it says, yeah. Wow. That's Yeah, that's crazy, actually, huh? Before Jim was making bikes. Yeah, wow. yeah. And not long after, I turned 15, and we went to Chandler for an ABA National, and I jumped up to 15 Expert, finally got a pair of Bill Walter leathers, and no, shit, I was wearing Levi's there, too. Took forever to get leathers. <laughs> and I won the 15 X at Chandler. So, uh, so you won experts. So he said, well, what, no, that said, was hey. easy. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah, easy. Let's turn, let's turn pro. These guys are yeah. nothing. Oh boy. <laughs> hey, do you remember back. do you remember that first pro race, by the way? I'm thinking it was like a Vegas national. Oh, okay. I think. Because oh. I believe we I drove up there and had utter back and Perry in my car and it was just hilarious <laughs> all the way home it was hilarious <laughs> wow. sorry mike what i was gonna ask do you remember back then you had to have two pros you had to have two people sign your form for you to turn pro do you yeah. remember who signed oh. your form i do yeah not. wait yeah, you had to have two pros yeah. like current pros yeah oh wow that's cool after the first go round of pros, if you wanted to turn pro after that, you had you had to have two pros sign your form to to let you turn pro. No way. Yeah, that's cool. And the fact I just, you could I just be, don't remember who it was. Yeah, 
I just imagine being 15 years old back then, being 15 years old now, having this 15 year old turn pro. Oh boy, yeah. But Greg turned pro not he, I think at 14 or almost 15. Same with Ruth. So yeah, you guys were so them. young, but you turned yeah. pro and you were yeah. you were all competitive. I remember who signed for Tommy Brackens, your brother from another mother. <laughs> <laughs> who signed Bobby for Woods? And I don't remember the second, but I gave Bobby Woods all kinds of shit. What were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh man. Well, Clint, uh, I was going to ask you a few things. Uh, first of all, we've had a number of people, call, you know, had told me to tell you hello. Um, but some some funny stories came out. A couple of good stories came out. But I was going to ask you first of all, um, you did you did ride for Torker for three years. You've got to be super excited about what's going on with Torker now, aren't you? Look at that thing. Uh, going to be wow. wall candy for a while. Nice little yeah. present from Bill Ryan. Yeah, man, those yeah. things look beautiful. It's going to be great to see you out on a bike again. Wait a minute, you gonna, what? You gonna... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I signed him. I, I didn't tell him yet. I already signed him up for Dirty Fast. That's right. <laughs> oh, boy. You're I'm not that far now. from me. I'm going to come bet that frame and, and build it up for you. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to show me about the European bottom bracket because no clue. Yeah, yeah, same here. I didn't know what to do with it when I got my yeah. bike. It was, it was straight from regular yeah. Ashtabula cranks to yeah. I was just trying to light cranks, cranks and then profile. I'm sure Clint was struggling to try to force those one piece cranks through there. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have a vice big enough. Yeah, get a bigger hammer, bro. Get a bigger. Oh, it's good. You know, I know you did have a lot of covers, and you were on. You know. A lot of people comment on the on your cover of Bicycle Motocross Action in the DG kit. A lot of people love that. They say that's their one of their favorite covers. And then, uh, and then there was the one with you on the on the Torker Cruiser, yeah. actually. Yeah, Guyverson shot that. Yep. Yeah, but the, uh, you know, I always my favorite picture of you of all was the one of you without your shirt on doing that Torker ad. It was right when the, the all the hype with Arnold Schwarzenegger and and Conan the the Barbarian, and uh, I I'll just tell you guys, man, I used to I used to give Clint such a hard time from that from the from the yes, day that as, from the day that <laughs> thing came out, I would just go up behind him in staging and say, "Hey, Conar, Conar the Barbarian." <laughs> from that point, yep. that, was, that was my nickname for Clint. Hey, Conar. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. now thinking back. There, there wasn't many guys that could pull stuff. that ad off. You did. Well, I wish the Jofa had been a little bit square because I see Bob messed up. It was a little mm. crooked. But in the grand scheme, it didn't matter. Uh, now, I don't think anybody Mr. was Johnson looking at the got Jofa. A lot of trouble over that one. <laughs> oh, I bet. Oh, yeah. You know, I bet them. I always wondered how did you get away with that with the movie theaters? With the, he with didn't. The... Oh, really? He didn't. Wow. They had to yank all that stuff and do a an apology, I believe. And oh wow, he was I didn't lucky know he didn't get sued. Or if he had, Mike, you never would have even rode for him. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> wow, that's well, crazy. I never heard that. Yeah. I didn't know that was the deal on that. Yeah, yeah he, I didn't know that either. Him. They never asked Tommy and I to take our shirts off. <laughs> good reason yeah it probably would have turned into a pillow fight anyway yeah <laughs> i always thought for christmas i should have got you a bench press mike yeah you know what i was uh i was never a gym i mean i shouldn't say that i was a gym rat for about two months and i realized all i was doing was getting sore i wasn't getting any faster <laughs> but you guys man you guys you were one of the first i think you were one of the first that really took the gym seriously yeah yep and it showed especially in that ad yeah well uh like i said your uh your time on on jmc most people never saw that right because mm. no it, it was, was all amateur and... yeah so yep and then when you when you were pro you were on dg at first and that's where i first saw you and first got to meet you um 
and you were you know you to a to a novice like me you were super cool you were very nice to me and uh you know I, you didn't know who i was you never said any, you know but you were always nice to me whenever i i was near you in staging or saw you at the races at, at corona you were always super nice to me and i, I want to tell you I, the way i was brought up there's no sense in being an asshole to everybody it's like it doesn't get you anywhere put your helmet on and go kick somebody's ass especially greg hills but go kick somebody's ass <laughs> <laughs> i like that though right like i mean i mean it like you said it does does you no good to be an asshole and no. you can take you can take whatever energy or fire that you want you, when you put your helmet on and when you take it off and then you you can you know you can go back to being normal for a normal nice person <laughs> exactly that's what i tried to do but that's how my folks brought me up it's like it was it is what it is yeah so. no it's good well it's good to know that your, pro, your folks could be proud of you because that's how you always were. Uh, and then, you know, I uh, how did you how did the whole thing from DG start? How did you get on there? Uh, team manager Roger somebody I can't remember his last hmm. name approached me, and then Botima came up and, dude, you got to be on this team, man. We need you. And Stu left, and that part is I couldn't ride that damn bike. <laughs> There was no aftermarket parts to stretch that thing out. They couldn't ride it. So I ended up leaving. They wouldn't change the frame for me. You know, those were beautiful bikes. The fit and finish, they were cool. Great I looking. Go fast on it. No, great yeah. looking. So actually, it seems like it was made for little kids. I actually was so frustrated. I put I had hadn't returned my JMC to Jim. I put that bike back together. Went to the Eagles Lodge for a pro night race. I think it was Tinker and Andy Patterson and a few freaking waxies guys. I go, I'm done. I'm. It's more important for me to just move forward and win races if I can. Yeah. And that was the end of it. And next thing you know, Utterback was calling, and I loved that frame too. It was just longer, better handling. But the DG, I was told later on that even Stu left because they wouldn't make him a frame that he could ride. Okay. Yeah, he said that he said that on our podcast that he was uh, yeah. he left because he could not ride the bike. I couldn't ride it either. Yeah. That's I was just wild, my man. ass handed. Yeah. To wow. They they missed two great opportunities, and all they had to do was just stretch the frame a little yeah. bit. Yeah, just make it bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. Right. Uh, <laughs> Wow. Can you imagine? Oh. Can you imagine a pro nowadays? Oh. Just saying, you know, hey, change the frame. If you don't change the frame, I'm going to quit. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, and then Gosh. when you went to GJS, that was a whole new program. I mean, you 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 changed you changed quite a bit. I mean, from a DG to a GJS is a huge change. Yeah, and it uh, worked out great because I love that bike. I don't, you know the Utterbacks. So those are super people, just like the Johnson, just super. And then Steve came calling. I felt bad, you know, for Jeff and his dad and his mom, but you, you're climbing that food chain. You're going after Greg and Harry and Stu and yeah. Brent Patterson. And I did what I had to do. I mean, I never got paid from Steve, but he got me to races. That's so, amazing that you were not paid from Torker to be their pro. And yet you got them more press than anybody. Yeah. Wow. So it's kind of like, yeah, it was great, you know. Then when Craig Kundig started, was calling and you're looking at this big paycheck. Monthly, From Kuwahara. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a no brainer. And Steve fully understood. Fully understood. Wow. So I, I did what had to be done, you know. How'd you like but, that bike? The Kuwahara? Yeah. The stock one wasn't wonderful. That's why Craig, we made changes and he built uh, myself an Ellis custom frames. And that's the only real frame I rode for the two years till we both got canned. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the one sitting in the Hall of Fame. So that uh, was a custom for me. Wow. Ellis's was custom. Wow. Yeah. They were not frame, stock frames. One frame for two years. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Hey, I didn't break it. Yeah. <laughs> did you I ride a stock torque? 
<laughs> Did you write a stock torquer? Yes. With non-stock torquer forks, the straightest ones I could find. Yeah. I mean, Understood. <laughs> the ones you and Tommy were on, that was uh, me and Mary Eddie and Kelly McDougal developing that frame with Steve Johnson at, oh, La Mirada Park. Yeah. He been, Steve went out and bought three different complete bikes, race bikes. I won't name the brands. And we tested all day and we all put our input in. And he pretty much took those, the geometry of that one. And that's what you and Tommy were on. I never got to ride it, mm. but I'm sure it was a lot better. Well, it was a lot, you know, I only got to ride one torquer before that. And it was, it was the old, old, old one. And it wasn't my bike. I just got to ride it at a, a local track once and it felt funky. It was Kevin McNeil's old torquer. Oh, that big old monster. Yeah, gigantic one. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't throw I my leg over the top. It was much better. I mean, it was a damn Harley Davidson. It's, <laughs> it was great at uh, Corona and Rancho. That's about it. But at least they, Steve made the change. You know? Yeah, he did. And so then you went to Kuara, and then after Kuara, what do you mean? Did they dissolve the team? What happened there? Uh, I think sales kind of went down, and from what I remember, Ellis and I got our checks cut the same day. Oh, <laughs> and he and he kept Lee for a while, and Greg basically went back to running Riverside, Redlands, Riverside, Schwinn, and. That's about all I know. And Gary and I were talking. Should we pursue legal? We both go, now nah, let's just keep going racing. <laughs> yeah. And you did. Yeah. And then you went to then you rode for your nemesis. Yeah, yeah. That guy. He'll what was it? What I what was that do you remember having to remember what that conversation was like? It was mainly his dad. Oh, good. Because his dad was co owner too. But yeah, I didn't, you know, it was cool when I was on with Greg and He and I talked a lot of shit over the years. <laughs> yeah, you guys used to. Yeah, you guys would. Yeah, it was a it was a verbal yeah. battle for sure. It was a battle on the track too. Yeah, yeah, but it was all good. It was all good, and you know, then his dad called me. You know, I was there just under a year, and they had issues with Cycle Pro. They were taking. You remember all this? He was getting taken to court. So, I got laid off on Christmas Eve. Oh. Where are you going to find a ride, a paying ride, or even a halfway decent ride not december no nope. <laughs> not christmas no. eve you're done that sucks <laughs> ma'am yeah so i i had a little kid at the time and oh i went to work fab and pipe and trying to still ride and roger contacted me so yeah i got that purple bike and the gear and a really crappy super bmx cover <laughs> and i <laughs> maybe did one race i don't even think i did that and Roger said, I really can't afford to do anything for you. So I returned everything. Mm. At least he wow. was up front. Finally. Wow. Yep. Well, you, and you got a cover for him. Yeah. It's a horrible cover. <laughs> My neighbor <laughs> right behind me used to race. Giant guy, Jesse. And he goes, I still have you on the cover of Super BMX in my house. I go, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> right, he was a Chandler local. <laughs> yeah. So I Roger had... Roger got you, but then he, he really couldn't keep you. He, like, you yeah, knew he I couldn't think, keep you. Things were tough all over. That yeah. was beginning of 85. Things were kind of going downhill. And at that point, I shut down my mail order company. And next thing you know, I was hanging fire sprinklers and 34 years later, done. Wow. So, what was your mail order company? Uh, CRD, California Racing Designs. I, I ran a brake, uh, the brake protector. Yes, you did. I don't think oh. I ever paid you for that, did I? <laughs> I, I I'll, tra I'll, tra I'll trade you for a sticker. All right. <laughs> no, that you never had to pay. Me. You never had to pay me, man. I'd have done yes. anything for you. I, so I owed you. I RL for a while. <laughs> no, I was going to say, Clint, did you have your only your own products or did you also resell other people's? I was reselling other people's stuff. And then my my brake guards, my uh, CRD snake post, uh, wizard products, Haro T-shirts, my own T-shirts, yeah. muscle power. Muscle oh, yeah. Muscle power you were a muscle power guy. 
I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do remember that too, you see. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Turns out, I find out years later, that's like the it was the lowest end of their product. I'm going, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, let me tell you, I stayed alive at the races. H Hank Van Olfen, well, great guy, yep. super super guy. God bless him. He uh, he uh, he. The lowest thing he sold was a cup of noodles. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was what I was living on them cup of noodles. <laughs> I love him to this day. He got me hooked. <laughs> he was a cup of noodle every, pimp. Every time you put the hot water and you think about it, don't you? Every time. <laughs> yeah. God, you know what? You know what really what would go good with this would be a, a strawberry muscle power. <laughs> that's right. That was a, I'd leave a little trailer two fisted, man. Yeah, great. Some spirulina. The bad part is that stuff tasted like chalk. <laughs> Oh remember, yeah, big time. You guys remember the spirulina pills? Yeah, you used to have the little, the little chalky white pill, the little white capsules. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I never dealt with that. Oh yeah, no, no, it'll get down. Don't it's good. It'll, it'll keep you from cramping. It'll keep you from cramping, dude. <laughs> I always thought the cup of noodles were doing it. <laughs> he, no, was, that, that stuff was full of salt. Come on, yeah, dude. that has that a lot really of salt. Good. <laughs> he was killing it though, man. Hank was killing it at the races. There was yeah. always a line. Yeah. He was such a nice guy, man. It was incredible to see him inside that little trailer. I don't, I never, you know, from Friday to Sunday night, I don't think he ever, ever stepped out of the thing. No, oh, no kidding. Yeah. If you I think, think he was, about it, though, I mean, it was, I, I mean, I know it's not like current um, nutrition products. I'm certain that it didn't have the stuff the current nutrition products have, but he's kind of ahead of the curve with the concept. You know, he was a hell of a. He was a hell of a salesman. He was, man. I, <laughs> I think the accent is what really, it really put it over the top because everybody thought, oh man, he's a Euro guy. For sure he knows about fitness and training. <laughs> yeah, most of it was crap. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. But we all, we I mean, we better. all did it. We all used it. Everyone yep. had stickers or, or patches on your jersey. Milk, yep. everybody had milkshakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, back then you had milkshakes and spoky dokies. Two most popular things at the Grands. Oh man, he was a good guy, man. He was good. Yeah, I, I got along well with him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the reason that I want to make sure I told the story. Uh, the reason I said you'll never have to pay me, and I always ran your sticker, no problem, was because I always felt indebted to you. Why I is always that? Felt, oh, I'm gonna tell you why. I always felt guilty. I carried this for years. The guilt on this. Uh, Fellas, at the very last race at Corona Raceway, you know, we made changes to the track. And I was, I think I was a 16 expert. I was, you know, maybe I was, That's, yeah, I, was, I think I, I think might I have know been 15, where you're going with this. Yeah. It was like, I was like a 15 expert, 16 expert. And, uh, and, and for the last race, we made some big changes to the track. And Stuart was there every day. He was on the, on the backhoe and he, you know, he built up a big water jump and, and uh, my friend Lenny and I were working on the on the second turn, and we said, you know what we want to okay. do, Stu, come over here and cut, cut off cut off the back side of the turn, and then th we we threw the dirt over, and so now it used to be a, a big bowl turn, and we cut the end of the turn off, and then it dropped straight down about six feet, then we went about six feet out, and we piled the dirt back up. Yeah. So when you exited the turn, you'd be three quarters of the way out of the turn, and then the turn just stopped. Yeah, and then you would drop off, and you'd have to fly about six feet, which you could, yep. to hit the landing jump. And then and we had this bright walked, idea. Walk the tra track previously. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had the bright idea the day before when we had practice. The day before was practice. We had this bright idea. Well, let's fill that gap with water. And so we didn't line the rain. We just put the hose in there. We made a little dirt dam, and we just filled it with water. And nobody knew about the changes, and we didn't think we had to tell anyone. Oh, they'll figure it out. They'll see it. Well, and the I first person, really damn quick. And the first person to come down the track, he came Sorry. out a day early for practice, was Clint Miller. And Clint comes down the hill. We see him go. He calls. He pedals. He jumps the big water jump. Ah, he's, he's going fast. And then he like, sits down His like we all jumps. do. We just all sit down. <laughs> and he comes out of the turn, and instead of – he slows he just... down, and he pulls up for the jump – which means he goes front wheel first, straight down the drop, right into the mud. 
Oh. And in the water, and he falls all the way in, just drenched. It was and it was covered with mud. And he, and he says a few choice words. Oh, muscle power. And he gets up. <laughs> Close. And he's standing right there and he's and he looks over and Lenny and I are standing there with shovels. And I think I'm holding the hose. <laughs> I'm holding the hose and Lenny's got the shovel and we're like speechless. Had nothing to say. I was like, I thought, oh, no. I thought for sure he is gonna kill me. He is gonna kill me. And he just brought he just got his bike, rasser, fraser, rasser, rasser, fraser, and just walked off. He didn't get on his bike, he just walked off, walked off and left. <laughs> Didn't see him till the next day for the races. Man, I yeah, felt I so bad. I should have yelled. I should have said, <laughs> wang, wang. But it was like it was slow motion. Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I can laugh at it now, but I thought for sure, oh man, Clint's gonna know he's gonna he's gonna hate yep. me for that. He's he's gonna know I did that. I that can't imagine what you must have been thinking when all of a sudden that the turn is just gone. Like oh, the end I of fucking it. wanted it up like no tomorrow. <laughs> and then I was just mad. It's like, I'm out of here. I gotta go hose everything off and hose myself off in the driveway at my own damn house. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Mr. 16 novice out there with a the hose. <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh, don't laugh, don't laugh. Oh man, <laughs> maybe you won't see us. <laughs> yeah, hide behind the handle of the shovel. Maybe exactly. you won't see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you guys knew I, each other back then. At that, he didn't. Time, didn't. He didn't know me. Oh. He was Clint, he was Clint Miller. He didn't know me. Oh, no, wow. but You know what? I'm pretty proud and glad that I got. I told you this once before, Mike. I got to watch you get fast. Same with Pete Longkarovich. I said the same thing about both of you guys. Oh, these guys are coming. Well, I don't thank you for that, Clint. I don't know about that. I, I know that I know that, like I said, everyone I talk to, everyone you talk to, you talk about they say Clint Miller, oh, he's the nicest guy. He's the nicest guy. And earlier you said something about the Eagles Lodge. Well, people don't know is the Eagles Lodge was the old Azusa track yeah. that ran on Wednesday and Friday and Sundays. And Wednesday night and Friday night, they would have three, sometimes four or five gates of pros yeah. on a Wednesday night or a Friday night wow. track. And it was, a, it was a tight track with a short first straightaway. True. And, and it wasn't well lit. And it wasn't super wide. And by the time you got to the first turn, it was not a big turn. Yeah. And, and it was the fiercest of all the races you'd ever go to. It was the fiercest Wednesday and Friday night racing ever. It was and a free for all twice a week. Twice a week. And it was, uh, how do I put it? it? Every moto was like a main event. Carnage. And, 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 you know, you raced all three motos with well, no transfer stuff. You raced all three motos. And in those classes, every single moto was like a main event. And every moto, because it was so tight, it was, they were, I mean, it was Slamming. elbow to rib cage every turn. Dude, and, that, that track was tight. Tight. It was mm. really, really narrow, man. And, and the, if you I got out being, of the first turn first, you better be sprinting. That's, yeah, I was, <laughs> be I, sprinting. Was, I was always because afraid of the first the turn, man. coming for you. There was Here, always I, crashes in the first turn. Because oh, people yeah. were cutting over so hard to get, and and I mean, dude, it was it was ruthless, JV, like that track. Yeah. And the locals there were fast. They knew they had the gates. Mister Coson was the starter. They had him down, and yeah. and everyone in the beginning, everybody was jumping the gate, right? <laughs> Clint Miller especially. Didn't I mean, matter that, what gate, what lane. I was going over the damn gate. Period. Yep. I mean there that was no gate 30, 30 foot rule. <laughs> there was no disqualifications. No. It's like you just slam the shit out of anybody. Close the door from <laughs> lane eight to lane one if you can within <laughs> 10 feet. JV, the top of the gate had sprocket marks all the way down oh, the gate really? from people just jumping the gate. I mean, you had to. <laughs> yeah, you had yeah. to jump. You had to jump the gate, and you had to cut over really hard, really fast. Mm. Yeah. And uh, or the other, the other only other option you had was if you were a guy named Kenny Battle. 
yeah for tartan bikes Kenny yeah. Battle could hang with the guys because he ran, get this, JD, 39 16. Oh, my. At Corona, also. Yeah. At, at Monrovia, he would go up one tooth to 40 16. But oh my. 39 could even, 16. Could you even see the, no. his legs move? No. That was like a sewing machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he, he could get out front, and you had to. But the problem was, is then the second turn was a bowl turn. And mm-hmm. so if, if, he, if you survived the first turn and you were. Like like Clint said, if you got out of the first turn of the lead, all you did was just sprint and just pray to God nobody would T-bone oh, you right. the second turn. <laughs> because the next, corner. Yeah, the next corner was T-bone Central. T-bone yeah. Central, dude. Yeah. It was the worst. <laughs> and the dirtiest, the the, oh, the most aggressive. Now, what the hell? The dirtiest the runners. Dirtiest. The dirtiest, were, dirtiest. They were all there. And and you know, they were there were guys there that were super competitive at that track, like EC said. Yeah. Uh Rick Wilkerson. Uh, Bob, <laughs> first wild man. The first he was called the wild man for a reason. Right. Uh, yep. A guy named Bobby Creek, who was yep. he was a big guy, and dude, he was not afraid to point his front wheel to your chain wheel. Just <laughs> yes. Oh. Um, he didn't get good starts. Later, you could throw. <laughs> yeah, he didn't, he didn't get good starts, but he could he could throw his his bike right into anybody. <laughs> oh man! And then there was a guy named a guy a JMC rider named Kim Jarbo. Yes. And Kim Jarba was a, he was also a big guy and he ran his bars forward, leaning forward, because he, he felt like he had a head start on everybody. Because <laughs> his bars were ahead of yours. And so he would he was dude, he was a monster at jumping the gate. You know and he what? ran a taller gear. Yeah. He ran a little bit of taller gear. I, I run into him before I retired from my trade on jobs. And we talked some and that was one of the best athletes. I have ever seen football, baseball, man, football. He just, dude was bad. Really? Bad. Oh, he should, he should have been in the NFL. He shouldn't have focused on BMX. And that was short lived. Yeah. Nicest guy, but man, he was an athlete. He was and good. he was not a, fr- he was not intimidated by anybody. Uh, he'd throw, he'd throw. Yep. And the no and I, I always say one of the biggest best fights I ever saw in a part in the in BMX was Harry Larry and Kim Jarbo. Clint was there. Clint I was oh, really inside the track. By the time I got over there, there was blood out of this guy's ears. I think Kim or Harry, one of them, maybe Kim, beat this guy to a pulp and then ripped ripped an earring, just ripped his earlobe off. Oh. By the time I got there, there was blood everywhere, and these guys were like dragging themselves through the gate. Man, I wait. Him, who got in the fight? Harry well, and Kim Jarbo with two with somebody or three else. Guys yeah, guys that weren't supposed to be there. Oh, they, they beat the shit out of other yeah. oh, people. Yeah, they, oh, I thought up. they both got in a fight. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, so there was some. It was Kim always Harry, action. Imagine, Wednesday, Harry started. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, Wednesday and Friday night racing at, at Azusa was was truly WWF. It was it was Friday night boxing. It was, I mean, they were duking it out every every moto, every corner, every the whole way around. And when you yeah. had people like, you know, like I said, Kevin McNeil, Harry Larry, those guys, they were they were not afraid to lay it down on each other. And it was literally elbows to rib cages all the time. Yeah. And yeah. And right. he's not getting off the hook. And if you ever seen Clint ride, his elbows are straight out, yes. straight out. If you if look at the, his his cover photo, the cover, I'm gonna put, yeah, I'm going to put a post p- picture. Every picture you see of Clint, his elbows are out. That's a Zeus of Friday night, right there. <laughs> Dude, I remember the first time I went there, and I did a gate by Mister Cosin, and it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> what do you mean, hey, JV? Because everyone jumped the gate, right? You would say, "Riders ready, pedals ready, go." Riders yeah, ready. Late. Everyone would just pull back. Yeah, yeah. But he was loud. Pedal, and then pedal, and, and then the sprocket marks. That's the yeah, he said, Pedals ready, and the, and the by the time he said go, your sprocket was hitting the gate. Was it well, who the hell's going to disqualify you there, Mike? Nobody, nobody. Yeah. So what Mister Coulson did was he changed. He changed what he said. Oh. He he changed what he said, and he would he would say this. He would hold the gate up, you know. He'd stand below the gate, hold it with a pole like this, and he would say, 
this is what it sounded. This is what he said. And I'll exactly. tell you what it sounded This like. is what it sounded. <laughs> he said, is everybody ready? The track is clear. That's what he said. But what it sounded like was, is everybody ready? Track's clear. And he <laughs> threw it on the T of tracks. He'd, he would say, is everybody ready? Track's clear. And so it, if you pulled back, the gate was dropping. Yeah. One, and it was, and it was one word. That it was it was just a big long rah, rah. yeah and it was loud as shit <laughs> loud if you were in lane one you seriously you had you would look at him because you'd want to know when he's gonna start screaming or else he would scare you and you missed the game dude it's loud <laughs> i never had that i never had a starter be loud like that he, was, he had a loud voice too man well that was especially after a 12 pack dude i was gonna yeah. say and he always had a beer in his back pocket Yes, he did. Yeah, and that was, was the spare. Ass. That was not the empty that was down by where he picked the gate up. That was his. <laughs> that was his spare. Ass, ass hanging out. With the- ass hanging out all the time. <laughs> I think Eric was driving home at thirteen and fourteen. I'm, sure I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and I think it, I'm pretty sure he was drinking beer at fifteen. Oh yeah. my well, God. yeah, we've all seen him now. <laughs> yeah, I loved well, Mr. Cosin, dude. We we were actually our family uh, became good friends with the Cosins and we weren't even locals at, at uh, Zeus and Monrovia, but we ended up being good friends with them. And man, I love that guy. He was, he was such a nice guy, Mr. Cosin. Oh yeah. He really was. Totally intimidating. Yes. Yeah. yeah he's a sweetheart of a guy. And, and if he told you, you jumped the gate, he, y- y- yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, you jumped the gate. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then you go right around back up the hill and do it again. Yeah, do it again over and over. <laughs> yeah, he changed. He had to change the cadence, and and he did for the rest of the time. And he used to start na- all the nationals on the West Coast, JV. Yeah. Oh. Him and Big John. Yeah. Yeah, Big we John had Hunt. four, from my memory, we had four great starters. We had Mr. Christopher, yeah. Tom Christopher's dad. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Henry, Todd Henry's dad. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, which was just Mr. Christopher with rhythm. <laughs> and then uh, and then there was uh, Tom Coson and then Big John Hunt. Yeah. Those are the, the, those guys, like at the Grand Nationals, it was those four guys doing the gate. And then Valley Teen Center, who he never traveled, was Dave's brother. Dave Clinton's brother. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Every night. How awesome. I- I, I love the very variable of that, that depending on when your moto was and depending on when the starters subbed out, you, it was a different cadence. Yeah. And you, and you might have, and this is crazy when you stop and think about it, you might, by chance, you might have the same starter for all three motos. And then in your semi, you had a whole different starter. Mm. Yeah. You're in your, if you hit the, you're done. You yeah. hit the gate, you're out. I love it though. And especially I, I, if you had someone like Mr. Christopher, who had a long cadence. Yes. You know, he, he said a lot of things before he dropped the gate. <laughs> let's get ready, riders. Okay, let's get set. Riders ready? Okay, that was ready to go. That's, what, that's Mr. Christopher. Exactly. That's what oh, he said. You, that was his whole cadence. You oh, dude, Mr. I got him down. I, I, sometimes Mr. I, Henry, right? He Mr. Henry go. was, let's get set. Riders ready? Okay, better ready to go. <laughs> that's how he did it that was mr henry dude i had him down i had him down uh mr christopher you could watch because he would tap his foot and you could if you had if you he was on next rhythm to him, yeah he he well his, he didn't have any rhythm so he had to tap his foot <laughs> yeah and then mr Coson, you know and then big john big john was riders ready pedals ready go yeah and you didn't jump the gate on him because you knew he'd stretch your neck if he <laughs> got you he was he was a bit another guy with a he yeah. had a beer in his back like pocket six, too. Seven. Yeah, big he man. Huge, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, it was great racing with those guys. It's fantastic, different. Anyway, Clint always had his elbows out. wasn't never was never afraid to mix it up uh, or to dive it was, in. It was and a contact sport until the nineties or two thousand. Yeah, That's you know, true. you know, I'm going to tell you who I hated racing the most. He yeah. was a buddy of yours, Kevin McNeil, because you never knew what crazy you were going to get. <laughs> it could be mild crazy, or it could be off, just off the shelf. Do you know that? Depending uh, on where his mind was at that particular day. 
and you rode with them a lot. You know what I'm saying. I, I let me tell you, uh, I have, uh, I, I owe Kevin McNeil a, quite a bit because he, he got me to a lot of races. My dad yeah. would give me five dollars to give him for gas, and then, uh, and that would get me anywhere. I mean, yeah. I went all over the western half of the United States with Kevin McNeil because he was going and he needed gas money. Yep. And so I was just the, you know, the, the, the 14 novice or 15 novice. It was hanging around. And I remember just people, I would, <laughs> did you come with Kevin? No, uh -uh, I didn't come with Kevin. I don't know who Kevin is. <laughs> no, I lied all the time. Yeah. I would, you know, as soon as I got to the races, I would get out of his Volkswagen and go somewhere else and not go back to his Volkswagen until it's time to go back because he did not make friends. He did not make friends. It's hard to be friendly when you see guys picking their bike up on the last turn and throwing it on top of somebody <laughs> or absolutely just crushing people in turns. Uh, that, that damn coaster break. He never touched him. <laughs> I, mean, I think he was on pro neck before he went, he went to a handbrake. Yeah, he was, he was the last pro, the last pro I saw that, first of all, last pro I saw that used three piece aluminum cranks, Kevin McNeil. Last pro I saw use a coaster brake, Kevin McNeil. Mm. Last pro, maybe the only number one pro that raced with a pie plate, <laughs> Kevin McNeil. Yeah. Now, um, uh, it's and my favorite. surprises me at all. <laughs> and my all-time favorite, my all-time favorite Kevin McNeil story. Yeah, the last, the only pro that didn't bring any other chain wheels with them to the races. And with his gearing, I saw, I swear to God, I saw it happen. His gearing was too easy. He was spinning out down the first straightaway, so he tightened his bottom bracket. <laughs> was this before or after he hit the, the the concrete column and tore his head off? Oh, man. Let me tell you, that guy. It might have been after. Yeah. No, this was before about... then. It was before. <laughs> he had one-piece cranks, and he just cranked on the – yeah, just cranked on the bottom bracket. Tight, bearings. Think about the logic of that. Sure. I, he wouldn't spin out because he had so much friction on it. Yeah, but. <laughs> oh hey, JV? Yeah, you don't... yeah, but. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. Yeah. That doesn't. Yeah, I don't think that makes hey, sense. They're all chickens. <laughs> they're all chickens. Yep. Dude, went to his house. His this Walkman is... was laying there. I picked it up. I put the earphones on. I pushed play. And it was his voice saying, they're all chickens and you're a lion. I'm a lion. They're all chickens. I'm a lion. They're all chickens. Over and over. His voice. That was his. Again, ahead of his time. Again, this doesn't surprise me either. One bit. It's so good, man. It's so, it, it's so good that it, it's just too good. So you got Mike Polson listen to the Rocky theme every time before the gate. And you got McNeil going, they're all chickens. <laughs> I am a lion. They're all chickens. You're all chickens. I'm a lion. Somebody get me a pipe. My gear's too easy. Somebody get me a pipe wrench. <laughs> yep. Bad part is he probably won that day too. Yeah. He was fast as shit. Dude, he was in he was incredibly strong, incredibly yeah, fast. So strong. And incredibly it didn't make sense a lot of times I would because I watched I watched all the pros and I, I would memorize like you we see I would memorize everything I would see. Yeah. And I would see him go on the inside, like he'd be in fourth place, and he would take a he would go straight on the inside of a turn right next to the cones, and it was an impossible line. Right. And there was no way he was going to make it without serious contact. Yeah. And and like Clint said, he would not hit his brakes. He would go full speed into people, and then that's what slowed him down. Yeah, yeah. that's what. Yeah, and, and he then was so was... big, he rarely went down. They would just go over. <laughs> yeah. And he would, t and there'd Shit. be times, and there, there's footage of this where you'd see him. He would take everybody, including himself, over the turn, and then at the last second, he'd just try to pull his bike back over and be the first one on the track again. Yeah, yeah. He had a strategy. That was, that was a strategy. <laughs> hey. And and I'll, and I'll tell you, I saw him win that way too. Yeah. I also saw him get DQ'd a bunch. <laughs> yeah. And then I'd be hiding behind the car next to his when the races were over. And when he'd, I'd jump in real quick and we'd take off. 
<laughs> and you'd, you'd have to be tying your shoes while you were driving out. Exactly, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was hiding. I was. There were times I was hiding. There's no doubt. And there were times people were chasing him. Yeah, yeah not surprised. Well, People's Clint Miller, making... I'll tell you, I'll tell you wow. what. I I never I never saw you get in a fist fight. Uh, I'm sure it probably happened, but I never saw it. I always I knew you were a fierce competitor in the gate. And, uh, and when I, you know, at, when I finally made it to pro and I raced you a couple of times, it was always knowing from, you know, I was having Friday night flashbacks. I knew that if I didn't get you out of the gate, if you got me out of the gate, you would cut right over. Oh, and that's, yeah. yeah, that was just racing. That's yep. so you had yeah. to get good gates. Yeah, I was going to hit you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you turn out the finish line. Hey, good race. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd have a big smile on your face, and I, I'd I have rubber I marks. I've never gotten a fist fight at any races that I can remember. No, and he didn't call it any work. A lot of times, but yeah, I don't, I don't think I ever threw with anybody that I actually remember. Oh, so. well, I don't think, think anyone wanted a piece of Conar actually. the ball bearing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, nobody wanted to be Conar. <laughs> it was a different time, though, man. The the you could race you know the tracks were different and the way the corners were shaped and the way the tracks were shaped it lent itself to that yeah. type of racing and aggressive racing and and leaning on each other there wasn't the berms were only so big there wasn't enough room for you know so if you were going to make a pass you had to get in there and rub around a little bit and mm-hmm. and and, yeah. and bang on people and so um and like you said at the finish line you you knew like you know, sometimes you got the bad side of it and sometimes you got the good side of it. But if that's that's the way the yeah. racing was back then, man. I, I love that. Um, you know, not not to go down the racing sucks path now, because I think it's a whole different evolution of the sport. But man, I, I I'm so grateful that we got to race during that era where it was I guess yeah. a little slower. We weren't clipped in and and we were we were kind of physical. It was yeah. more physical. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. It, it, was, it was a contact sport. Yes, it was. All there is to it. It was a contact sport. Right. I want to make a statement. I watch the current videos of these new school guys. Yeah. And I see all the posts from all us old timers. And those guys are some athletes that don't get paid enough. But there's some freaking athletes right there. It's like there's some bad dudes. They're the real deal. I agree. I agree. I, I agree wholeheartedly with you, man. Like I try not to get too into the you know, we see it on the forums and we see it on Facebook and the yeah. posts where um, people really get, there, there's a lot of different topics that people compare our our era to the new era. Yeah. Um, and there's different topics in that, but from the pure athlete side of it, dude, those guys are, they're so far ahead of anything. Well, any of us were. That we were yeah. doing the, the training, the performance, the way they, <laughs> Look at Hollywood. Yeah. The way they were, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> how they manipulate their the, the manipulation of the bike through yeah. over and around obstacles is pretty amazing. amazing. Yeah, it truly. And it I is. just call it like I see it. I mean, people might bash on me. That's fine, but I see good athletes right there not getting paid what they should be. Yeah, well, I agree. They're they're fast twitch is. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man. They're, yeah, they're they're incredible. I mean they are incredible. It really is. It's, it's the first supercross BMX race I saw was 2017 at uh the Hall of Fame down there. Chula Vista. Chula Vista. Yep. And it was like, holy smokes. Yeah, These crazy that nuts. track. Yeah. Nuts. The it first jump, the first set of doubles right down on the bottom of the gate. I'm like, <laughs> oh, holy. Yeah, I'm not like doing that. Yep. <laughs> not on your yeah, best but, day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're and they're not doing it on on cup of noodles and muscle power either. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it's it's a it's a, it is it's a different game now for sure, man. man. And and yeah. like I said, I'm grateful we got to be we had our time and we yeah. got to experience it the way we did, and we love that. And I'm sure that the new school riders they love the sport how it is right now because that's their that's, sport. That's what they um, grew up with. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's, that's there to them. It's, that's just how the sport is, right? They yeah, don't know it's normal. Me. Yeah. It's kind of, I kind of see it coming back a little bit. Like the tracks are most mostly dirt. Like, aren't they getting more dirt? Like, no, 
I thought I I thought I've seen some some o- pictures. Only of new dirt. tracks. Only new tracks are dirt, but the only dirt until until the dirt is settled and packed in. Then you then they're soil tacking them. Oh, okay. It makes sense. Were, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, no. Listen, Frogtown, Dirty Fest. Yeah. Dirt. Texas. Yeah, those are those are the old school tracks. We got no soil <laughs> tack out of Vail. No. <laughs> we got water and urine. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And maybe some ra- and maybe some radiator fluid from sure. some idiot that drove their car out there last week. That's right. Yeah. So maybe some motor oil from when it used to be a motocross <laughs> track. I, I don't know, man. But yeah, it's uh it's oh, there's some rattlesnake rattlesnake blood out there too. There are there's for sure some of that. So Eric, are you gonna get your buddy McGrath out there to this one, Dirty Fest and Race? I think he's coming? I think he's I think he's planning on going. Good. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's planning on going. You know, it's a he's he's pretty tight with Huff too. And I think Huff talked him yeah. into going and and um Huff talked him and Lopes because Brian and, and Jeremy are also pretty close yeah. friends. And so they they kind of did a um a caravan thing up to go um this is a lot closer for him obviously so um i'm hoping i I, you know he he knows about it it's it it's really based on his schedule um you know and what's going on like i know often he was doing a lot of supercross stuff and going to different supercross events and he has some uh responsibilities as far as being at the pits some of the races and stuff so um but yeah i'm i'm certain if if he's in town he will be there for sure yeah, tell tell him Hollywood will float him fifty bucks to show up. Yeah, hey. yeah, yeah. But I'm not I'm not telling him about the water hole. He's gonna have to find out on his own. I'll be standing there with a with a shovel and a hose. <laughs> yep, that's almost worth it. That's <laughs> almost worth it. <laughs> I'd love Terry to come on down though. I think it would be great for him to race. I really think that Terry needs to come down simply for the fact that he's won. He won Frogtown. He won Frogtown. Yeah. And I'm not going to say that Frogtown is easier. I'm just saying he won Frogtown. Yeah. I'm not saying that we have a lot more riders at our race. I'm just saying he won Frogtown. <laughs> I'm not saying that he's afraid to come down. To oh, shit. There we go. <laughs> I love it. He just started it right there. Yep. 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 We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> but Miller's going to be there. That's what I hear. Yeah. Clint Miller's going to be there. Yeah, yeah, I will be there. I will see you guys in a few weeks. That's right. That's going to be so great. Yeah, it's going to be great, you know, seeing you ride the track on your torker and throwing elbows. freaking mind. Cut, cutting people off out of the gate and throwing elbows in the turns. It's going to be awesome. Dude, it is. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> Are you going? Are you going to go, Clint? Yeah, I'm going. All right. All yeah. right. I'll be hey, there. Clint. Yes, sir. Sure. Tell us about your world championship, man. I had a good week. Yeah? Elaborate. I want to hear about it. You know, I had a good week and Hillage did not. <laughs> <laughs> and you loved that. Oh, I was all over it. Especially that photograph of me on the top step and Hill looking up at me like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I know what was going through yeah. his barbed wire head. I guarantee it. <laughs> where, uh, where, where was that? Where, where was the race at? Slaghar in Holland. Oh mm. wow! I, I probably didn't pronounce it right, but I was. No, close. you did. Slaghar. Yep. Yeah, beautiful that's facility. A, that was the very first, the very first World Championships, truly yeah. and truly World Championships, because it was held in in Holland. So everyone from Europe was there. I mean, everybody from mm. all the countries back then were there. It was and, insane. And Pony Park, Slug Karin, yeah. was the at that time the Disneyland of of Europe. Oh, mm. the place wow. was huge. They yeah. had so many amusements and it was it was pretty wild. I'd never dealt with anything like that. It was cool. Yeah, great track, great facility, great run, you know, and it's and in Holland they take cycling, every oh, kind yeah. of cycling super serious. Mm. It's a big deal. It was all televised and they estimated over the th- three day period, three million viewers, and I think they estimated close to a hundred thousand people spectating. I mean, whoa, we were yeah. slammed 
with autographs and people trying to rip stuff off your bike and get your clothes. And I remember oh Craig God. Kundig putting Dude. his arm around me, grabbing my bike, and so were other team managers behind us to get us through the crowds to get to the starting gate. And then you got to focus. And you're like all jacked up. It's like looking around going, where's Kevin McNeil? Where's Kevin McNeil? <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was pretty wild. That I, I mean, that would have to be the most uh, highly attended. Yeah, it, it was intense. BMX was race ever. I mean, you everywhere. imagine. Uh, imagine going having a race at Disneyland at Disneyland on Memorial Day. Yeah, right in the middle of Disneyland. Man, that's what this was, and uh, crazy, and it was the first true World Championship, and and Clint won it all. Smoked him. Like you said, you had a great weekend. It wasn't that you won one race. I mean, you dominated. I, w- I was up front every race, and to this day, Andy Patterson's not going to like this, but I think if I had, had lane eight, Mike, I think I could have doubled. Lane eight killed me, man. I was like off the track. <laughs> <laughs> Ended up third with Stu and Greg crashing. But this is just one of those weekends. We all get them. And we got bad weekends. So it was good though. Good experience. Yeah. It's good when you have that, when you have that feeling, right? When you get to a race that's that big and all the cylinders are firing and you're just like, dude, this is going to be a good week, man. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, all that motivation and confidence carried on through to the end of 84. And then it all blows up in your face. So whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? From now on, from now from that day forward, there'll always it'll always be Clint Miller, comma, world champion. That's right. Yeah, it's cool. For the rest of your life. That's world right. champion. Was yeah. that the first ra- the first world championship race? Or was there oh, one before one? Uh, international that? world championship. Be- yeah. The wow. year before they had one at Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, and they called it a world championship. It was just like a big. big it was a weekend NBA national. national. Yeah, like a big national. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it was not cool. even a big national. It was cool. Yeah, but, but this it wasn't that because so this is the a... first international, like yeah. true international one. Oh yeah. wow, that is really awesome. Really awesome. Just, I was just glad to be Greg. I was happy about that. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> Like I said, Bill and I talked a lot of shit. So, forty-five years worth. Still, he's, still. He's by the way, still. right now he's watching this thing going. Shit. <laughs> Son of a bitch. He's ta- he's taking notes on to rag on me for the next week. I guarantee it. <laughs> I, I know, it. probably won't have him come back. <laughs> it's so good. It's was so he good your though. favorite guy to beat? <clears throat> Clint, was he your favorite guy to beat? Uh, Put it this way, he was, yeah, I was pretty happy when I could beat him. Mm. I mean, you, you, Mike, you know, you raced him. He was, he was, guy became a great athlete also. And he went from a skinny 13 year old to a badass. And again, I call it like I see it. He, yep. he, he got good. Yeah, man. And I got it the first taste of that when he was on Shimano and he and I went on tour. I was on Torker off to Seattle. Off to NorCal, we're racing straight down to Amarillo, Texas for a pro spectacular, sleeping in the back of his Ford Courier in a hotel parking lot, mind you. <laughs> that's like, that's when he was getting fast when Bobby and Cena hooked him up and he jumped on a GT. He, he put in the he put in the work. He put in the work. So yeah, he was he he knew what he wanted, man. He was intense son of a bitch, wasn't he, Eric? He was a pretty focused dude, man. He really was. Pretty focused. Like, yeah, man. It was yeah. crazy. Like, I mean, yeah. like Mike said, I, I was just a kid watching, yep. but I was paying attention. Yep. And, uh, man, you could just see, you know, his his level of focus was just, it was just so high, man. And he was so intense. I, I intense. actually learned a lot from him because Harry and I were driving to his house in uh, wherever his folks' house was. It was in Orange County. And he'll call it the mailbox nationals to this day. <laughs> We're doing starts into the street with nobody watching. Yeah, of course. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of starts for weeks and weeks. And he did this for years. 
how did you not become a hood ornament on a Toyota? We didn't hit the brakes <laughs> ever. <laughs> Those were some intense nights at his house. Oh, yeah. Doing gates. Oh, yeah. Intense. Yeah. That I mean, think good. about. Yeah, it, you guys... BC was the same thing at BC doing starts at the in BC. You, you know, whenever you get a group of whenever you get a group of BMXers together, no matter where, and if it's a practice track or a local, doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, Dude, I'm really the shitty... there to do, outdo each other. Yeah, man. Those little shitty practice gates with no start hill. Right, because it's a, you know, or a gradual driveway. Yeah. So it's it's just there's no gravity, man. It's just all torque, and oh my gosh, and you're so mad when somebody beats you out of the gate. <laughs> yep. You can't wait to get back in line as fast as you can, right next to that joker. Yeah. <laughs> it's good then, though, man. That, drove next us. start, you blow your you blow your damn bike up, and you're head over heels, oh. and then you're really mad. Yeah. <laughs> He'll get me a chain. <laughs> exactly man Oof. god those are good times <laughs> we were young when we did it <laughs> we were man yep. destroying I'm, our bodies literally yep. destroying our backs but... i'm surprised everyone that raced bmx back then and did all those gates doesn't have lower back problems now i know I got most of us do probably yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you throw your back out just getting out of bed amen well, all the teams that you were on, the traveling you did, we, I like to ask this question. It's a two-parter. Who was uh, who's your favorite person to travel with, or your favorite teammate? Someone you got along with well, and there's a couple of them: Eddie King and Ellis, and Lee Medlin. But all all good Eddie guys. Was cool. Yeah. Part of my job was to babysit Medlin and Ellis and keep them out of trouble. And that never worked, but they were a lot of fun. Really? You know Lee very well. I don't, I don't, wouldn't think keeping Lee out of trouble would be hard. Dude, there, you'd be what, 21 stories up? Shit's going out the window. <laughs> <laughs> going out the window. Mild mannered Lee Medlin. Really? Wow. Oh, Good yeah. to know, huh? Yeah. That's coming. That's going to come back out. It, but dude, I was there. That's awesome. Lee's, that's going to come back to haunt him. Lee yeah. is super local to me, Clint. I he, yeah. I mean, like really, really local. Lives down the street. I, he's actually my realtor. I've <laughs> got my house from him and stuff. So yeah, and I he is always ripping the local. Like I'm pointing because it's literally uh, uh, 250 yards to the trailhead, and he rides that trail network. So I see him out on the trails. At, uh, Frequently, man, I'm gonna have to bust yeah, his yeah, balls. Because, <laughs> like you know, Mike says, mild mannered Lee Led Lee yeah. Medlin. He is, but he had his moments. Come on, he was young. You get him and Ellis wound up, and they do some stupid shit. Well, you would think Lee Medlin and Gary Ellis, the two most low key <laughs> non, <laughs> right? Right, the two guys you'd think, oh, yeah, this they'll be okay. We can leave them alone. They'll be fine. Exactly. <laughs> and next thing you know. Pat furniture's coming out of the hotel room 26 <laughs> floors. That's so good, man. I love it. It's it, the last two guys I would think that would do it. That's great. Yeah. Uh, all I'm right. Gotta, I got to ask, I got to ask the other question then. So of all the people you traveled with, which was a lot and all the guys you hung out with, who were the least favorite? Anyone come to mind? Were, I knew you were going to go there. Oh, he does not want to Man. say <laughs> Don't worry, I'll really edit it out. That. Don't worry, I'll edit it. <laughs> no, nope. Uh, you're you're wanting me to say Harry. But no, I'm want got... I'm I'm wanting you to say I'm wanting you to say whoever comes to your mind. One of them I didn't really travel with him, but he's a buddy of yours. It'd be, I didn't travel with him, but we were at the same places. It'd be Clarence. Really? Wow. wow. Whatever. Wow. It was. Later on, it was wor worse. But back then, and I'm not bagging on Clarence. I know he's a nice guy. But we all put our helmets on and shit happens. <laughs> and mainly it happened years later when we were amateurs. 
That's crazy. Wow. Man. The earthquake. Dude, that's, yeah. three, na- <laughs> three names I just got blown away by, right? Those three guys. The first two I would not think were troublesome at all. And no way would I think Clarence. But well, I can like see I said, how. I later, can see how. Later on, when he was racing for contingencies on yeah. Red Line, you remember yeah. those days? And I, whatever. I mean, I guess I shouldn't have been in front of him all those times. I don't know. Didn't have too many issues other than, you know, a lot of this in corners when we were racing pro. Yeah. You know, I was kind of expecting you to, for me to say, Harry, and I really didn't have a whole lot. We always got along. Yeah. And we put shit behind us. That's just how we were. I mean, I knew him when I was 11. But no, yeah, I later mean, I... on, it would, it would have been Clarence. But prior to that, I didn't have, we were all battling. I didn't have issues with anybody. Yeah. No, I mean, I, uh, I, I would get him the next one. I would not have thought Harry because, like I said, all those Wednesday and Friday nights, I saw you guys battle and and elbow each other and cut cut each other off out of the gate, and it didn't make any difference because it was after you know you turn around a good racing after the end of the race and then you do it again on Friday and then you yeah, do it again yeah. next week. It was just it just was natural for us. Yeah, it was just part of the racing and and it, and if you couldn't ride physical, if you couldn't ride physical, you couldn't you race at Azusa. Left. Yeah, you're gonna get left. Yeah, you're you're gonna. No, it was it was it was good racing, and and you were good at it, Clint. You were good at it from from the first time I saw you. You were good at it, uh, of riding aggressive, holding your line, mm. taking a, or getting a great start and taking the line you want, and and not many people ever pushed Clint Miller out of his line. Some Dude, of the bigger guys might have. Yeah, <laughs> yep. I didn't have a lot of weight. Dude, you were pretty <laughs> strong, and you had a low center of gravity. Yeah, this is true. This he is had true. those elbows out too, so you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you made you made your space. I, I used the upper body a lot. That just was my position. <laughs> yep. I, and you were the first guy I saw that always did power wheelies. You always did power wheelies. Mm. I know you I know and why. and then I saw Lee Medlin do it, but I saw you do it. You did it your whole career. You I would know. do power wheelies out of every turn. I would try to. I was trying to change my stuff like. I'm going to use Greg as an example. I mean, his bars were a little farther forward, but I pulled differently than he did. He His arms hardly ever moved. And man, he was a bullet. And I just had, I doing everything I could to keep up <laughs> or be in front of him. It's just the way it worked out. Worked great on indoor cement tracks. <laughs> Not so much on slick some slick dirt tracks <laughs> when i saw you ride and do that i thought that guy is working he's you're trying to get everything you can out of every single pedal stroke yeah. that's what it looked like yeah. yeah and then i saw the then i saw the conan ball bearing ad and i thought dude he he must have bent a lot of handlebars <laughs> he must have bent because he pulled so hard on your bars all the time I didn't I just think thought, I did with those Galindos. I had I had a shelf full of Galindo <laughs> bars. There you go. Tell him JV. <laughs> Galindo right there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Tell him JV. Best bars ever. <laughs> as, long as, as long as you put ear plugs in. <laughs> hey, Mike, they had a nice bit. They had a oh, nice There you go. Bed. See? I, I agree. I mean, I used them. I used them. Great, great bar, great bend to the bar. Yeah. That's all I said. That's all I would say. That's all I said. But you need to I... weld a piece of rebar across and get rid of the plastic. <laughs> well, then it would be a regular bar. Yeah. <laughs> then you wouldn't have to loop your bars anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You wouldn't have to tighten your handlebars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I just got to wrench. I got to tighten my, my crossbar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come on, JV. Hey, look. I'm not saying it made sense. You know? <laughs> half the reason jv and i use them was simply because we loved the rudy rudy glendo and bedford and bedford yeah. Yeah. yeah bedford was his marketing guy we loved those guys they were they were just hilarious to be around it was great <laughs> yeah yeah rudy was a nice guy super nice guy yeah and his checks cashed <laughs> his checks always cashed that's always important cashed. <laughs> Can't say that for all of our sponsors, huh, Clint? <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, buddy, listen. Uh, 
is there is there anything you want to say no i just look forward to seeing you guys in a few weeks yeah really it really is coming up there and, and and the wife is really excited about having me out of the house <laughs> so well there's going to be a lot of people that are very excited to see you i really think you guys excited. are going to be slammed this year compared to last year so I, I think i'm coming the right year i'll see a lot of people yeah it, yeah you will watch it it's gonna so it's gonna be a, i think it's gonna be a big weekend oh yeah it's gonna be it's a lot of fun be, yep it's getting something over there is it done? Okay. <laughs> well, when I see you, I, I got something I need you to sign for me. Ooh. Oh, oh holy smokes. Look at that. It's my, my helmet bag. No way. <laughs> it is a helmet bag. Yeah. I opened it up and I was cleaning out and a bunch of muscle power fell out of it. <laughs> You're hoping it was muscle power. <laughs> oh man so looking forward to seeing you clint i know I, i'm i'll be in line with everyone else to get your autograph yeah yeah i i heard something about that and i'm going no no you don't want to do that yes the world it's champion awesome. yeah the world, world champion clint, yeah so yeah. Ho hopefully they're doing a barbarian poster and i'll sign that for you too uh, i'll give bill ryan a call when we're off, <laughs> off of this don't worry. Don't worry. I'll have that picture framed and ready for you to sign, baby. <laughs> I want one too. Yeah. All I got is me of that muscle power stretching poster. No, Conar. I'll, have, I'll have Conar the ball bearing ready for you. Don't worry. All might right. be I might have to make a custom one just for you. All right, you do that. I love it. That's hey Clint. So cool. Thank you, buddy, right, for guys. coming on. Great thank having you. you thanks, on. Clint. And you know what? Everybody was right. You are the nicest guy. Well, thank you. Like I said, it doesn't pay off to be an asshole. <laughs> That's agree. true. That's true. Except in construction. So I don't have to be that guy anymore. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. buddy. You were awesome. All right. Thanks, Thank Clint. you very much. We'll see you in a couple weeks. In a few weeks. We'll see you in a couple weeks, Clint. Yeah. Right. Everybody have safe travels. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one, you bunch of dirty knobs. So please do that. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Comment if you have anything to say. We'd love to hear it. And uh, we will be back out here in two weeks with another one. And thanks to our sponsors. Speaking of which, we are going to read some commercials to you now. Thanks for uh, showing our sponsors the love because they're showing it to us. Thanks again. And uh, we'll catch up to you soon. Hey, this is John Cruz. Uh, no, we're not having an earthquake. I have Parkinson's. What what do you think of that, Michael? Uh, some we ought to pitch in and get you a gimbal. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. But but seriously, um, this is John Cruz, uh, and uh, I obviously have have something going on, and I was diagnosed with Parkinson's twenty years ago this year, actually. Um, so. Uh, I've, I've chosen the Davis Finney Foundation over the years to be my voice for Parkinson's. If you're not familiar with the Davis Finney Foundation, Davis Finney is one of the winningest cyclists in American history. Uh, he's the roadie, if you guys yeah, remember those roadies out there, um, all that lycra and stuff, but, uh, he is just a great man. Um, when he was diagnosed with Parkinson's, he decided to make a difference in people's lives. Um, and his, his choice was to start a foundation. And that foundation uh, obviously wishes for a cure for Parkinson's because there is no cure at this time. But they recognize that you have to live with Parkinson's. And your caregivers are having to live and take care of us. And the Davis Finney Foundation, that's what they do, is they only look for a cure, but they look for uh, ways to enhance the quality of life for Parkinson's sufferers and their caregivers. So uh, I appreciate all of you supporting the Davis Finney Foundation. 
Uh, it certainly means a lot to me. Um, I know we all have something, right? So I think it's important to give back to our communities, whether it's BMX or a, a foundation that's close to your heart. If you don't have one, please choose mine. I appreciate you. Well, thank you, John Cruz. You certainly have made a difference in a lot of lives, including mine, and giving us the opportunity to do something good for somebody else is, is fantastic. So thank you, thank you so much. And on behalf of John Cruz, please find a way to give something to the Davis Finney Foundation on behalf of John Cruz, the Dirty Knobs, and your entire BMX family. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're ready for this. So we're gonna go one, two, three, record. Hey guys, this is Bill Ryan. I'm the owner of Supercross and I'm now the caretaker of Torker. Now Torker, you might see right above the shoulder here of this dirty knob, Mike Miranda. He's got a Torker jersey. He's a Torker alumni. We've been working for nine years to bring Torker back to its original foundation, to its original roots, to its original twin top tube radness. So at Dirty Fest, you've got to go. You've got to be at Dirty Fest because at Dirty Fest, you're going to see a bunch of the original Torker riders showing up and you're going to get to see a bunch of really cool restoration, remake, re new versions of what you remember from your childhood that you actually get to ride. So it's a first edition, limited run. It's going to be available starting launching at Dirty Fest. If you're in the UK, Alan's BMX, he's got some coming over to him. He's going to be launching them the same day. With this Clint Miller interview, you saw the Barbarian, the 26-inch Torker. I mean, come on, Clint actually asked us to call it the Barbarian. There's an Eddie King edition. Oh, my goodness. What a fun project. Nine years of my life has been dedicated into this to try and bring more fun to everybody out there. Just like Mike Miranda has been trying to do with EC and JV with doing Dirty Fest. You've got to come out. You've got to see this. You've got to touch the twerkers. You've got to feel the twerkers. You need to ride a twerker. For more information, there's a link on the Dirty Fest site, but... You just go to torkerracing.com or follow us on Torker Racing on Instagram. Boom. You're going to get to see all the inside stuff. You're going to get to see some stuff that Mike likes. You're going to get to see the Pro X. You're going to get to see the new goodies. Oh, fun stuff. And then sing it out right now. All right. <laughs> Coming live and direct from the Colt Clubhouse in Santa Ana, California. Come on down and get all your BMX needs. We're giving away free air for your tires. <laughs> That's all I got, brother. That's great. That's great. All right. Now. It's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> Velocity Bike Park is the premier bike park for riders in Southern California. With 25 miles of world-class trails, obstacles, flow track, and races for mountain biking, gravel, and BMX. Ultramax. When you get home from the races, do you feel dirty? I mean, is your bike dirty? Really dirty? I know you're dirty. Well, that's when you need the Ultramax sponge, guaranteed to get all your hard-to-reach places clean. I know, because Hollywood is always dirty. Not available where reading glasses and bobbleheads are sold, but you can still get an Ultramax t-shirt at DirtyKnobs.com. Hi everybody, Toby Henderson, founder of Box, co-founder of American BMX Companies, the owner of Race Inc., Botima, and Cook Brothers Racing. We brought these two companies together to bring you the best quality product you can get for a BMX bike. We're all about the rider, so please check out our Level Up and Rider First programs. See you at the track.
ODI Grips, the world leader in grip technology, home of the lock-on grip system. Check them out over at www.odigrips.com. 4416 Designs commercial, take one. There you go. <laughs> All right, 4416 Designs. We make shirts, but we don't sell them. Uh, we're just giving back to the sport. If you're out at Ukaipa BMX and you need a shirt, hit me up. I'll hook you up with one. Yeah, I love that. Mega Design Group is a full-service marketing firm. They handle everything from logos to advertising to packaging. Having over 25 years' experience in the print and marketing fields, they can handle any hurdle. Check it out at megadesigngroup.com. Carbone Cartel, for the finest carbon BMX racing products in the market. Make sure you check us out at CarboneCartelBMX.com. Our products are ridden by the best in the sport. Drew Polk, Nick Long, and many, many more. This isn't the cheap shit you get from Ali Bobbitt. Make sure you check us out again at CarboneCartelBMX.com. Cool Stop Brake Pads. High-performance bicycle brake pads since 1977. Check them out at coolstop.com. That's K O O L S T O P.com. Supercross BMX. What can we say? Our lives revolve around BMX. Founded in 1989 to build the ultimate BMX race frame, they've never strayed from that vision. Hey, for more details, check it out at supercrossbmx.com. Hey everyone, this is Brian Wilson with ProGate. We are the official gate supplier for UCI and the Olympics. We even make a gate that you can practice on in your driveway at home. Wait a minute, who else are you making a gate for? We're making a gate for Dirty Fest. You guys got to come and check it out. Whatever Dirty Fest needs for this track, we're going to supply it. We're not some French knockoff, you know. We're the gold standard in BMX gates. And make sure to check us out at progate.net and bmxtracksupply.com, and we'll see you at Dirty Fest for sure. Take care, everybody. Hey, folks, this is Mike Rodriguez, a.k.a. Mr. Crit. I've been racing and making number plates since 1980, you know, like when they used to do one-pedal starts. But you know, Crip Blade has been around for 43 years. The last four decades, the who's who of BMX have raced a crit number plate straight to the handlebars. And you know, you get that guy, Mike Savage, the international man of BMX, still doing it strong. And you know, back in the day, the plates used to be reversible because there was multiple sanctions and you could put, you know, one sanction on one side, one on the other. Now you just got one, but crit is still reversible. And that logo is still on the back. For guys like Mike and your rad guys, you know, like Mike Miranda, who would turn those handlebars and twist them up. And we got it rad just for you. All right. Hey, where will we see those plates? Those plates you can see at every single bike shop that, that, that stocks BMX stuff in the USA and Canada. And where will you be at? Will you be at an event sometime soon? Damn, I'm sponsoring the Dirty Fest. And I can't wait to come out to Southern California and, and get dirty. Amy Grips, still made here in the USA, used by world champions like me, Tommy Brackens. If you want to know more about the best grips on earth, go to amy.com. Ready? <laughs> and that's going in. Yeah. <laughs> we need a doing. All right. What's your nickname for, uh, for like, from the mic? Do you have a... No. You don't have. I don't really have a nickname. It's my, oh, just Mike on the mic. Pain in my ass. <laughs> that, she got that's one. That's getting edited. Yeah. <laughs> We're putting that in. Hi, I'm Mike Miller, author of Day One by Michael Miller, and a special offer going out. Anybody who buys the book between now and Dirty Fest, which is April 28th through 30th. I'm going to take all the money from the book and send it to the Davis Finney Foundation for those with Parkinson's. So get your copy on Amazon.com and we'll make a donation.
Hey, what was the name of that book again? Day One by Mike Michael Miller, which is me. I'm sorry. Hey, what was that name again? Day One by Michael Miller. Hey, support the podcast that support us, our friends, uh, the fine folks over there at All Things BMX, which is our favorite Wednesday night live podcast, as you know. Uh, our buddies over there at Beer Budget BMX, uh, Big Bike BMX, and BMX Weekly. Check them out. Check them out. Our friends. What's up, everybody? It's your friend Isaac from Big Bike BMX, and I've got a podcast with my best friend, 80s BMX, Craig. Yep. And guess what, you guys, if you have enjoyed your time here on the Dirty Knobs podcast, we'd love for you guys to come over and hang out with us at Big Bike BMX, where we've got all your old school legends and BMX from the past and today at Big Bike BMX. Isaac, come check us out. We'd love the opportunity to win you over. And if not, hey, it's just another place to talk about BMX with your grimy friends. It's fun. Hey, Dale Holmes, I want to tell you something. One of my favorite podcasts that I never miss is BMX Weekly. Even though it has an accent, I still love it. <laughs> Cheers, Mike. You can get all the podcasts on bmxweekly.com. Old school, mid school, today's school. Check it out. Yeah, BMX Weekly. <laughs> hey, here we go. Hey, Beer Budget BMX, baby. Coming out you live from the beer budget studios over here at the hack shack quarantine oh man we're coming in hotter than the satan's nutsack yeah we are dirtier than an alabama strip club where reclass pros go and get lap dances by their half sister yeah the only show that'll make you second guess your life choices like an amish on an e-bike hey if you guys enjoy what you just listened to make sure you tune in every wednesday night to the all things bmx show the only live streaming podcast show in the game right now even ask mike he's been on vicente has been on still waiting for that other guy to come on the show you can find us on youtube twitch and facebook and you can also find us at all things bmx show.com keep it dirty <laughs> I got two minutes till. Are we going to play the game? I'm going uh, five after. Five is the number. Yeah. And you're going to take the under? Uh, I'm going to take the under. Yeah. All right. I'll take Definitely the Definitely going for the under. I think he's going to be aggressive today. Did you text him to come on already? No, no. Okay, me either. No. 605, he just clicked in. Uh, so that's nine. Nine, I have I have nine. Yeah, 905. Look at that. Yeah. Better than the money. You're gonna you're gonna be a golf cart expert. Brother, I think I've almost taken the I think the, the cart is almost I mean completely, we've, a completely lot of new <laughs> we've replaced almost all the parts. <laughs> Could have bought a new one. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, a couple about a month ago, he got stung by a bee really bad, and then um, last uh, last Thursday, he got stung by a bee again in the same spot on his head. So as he went through the whole deal, his whole face. Wait, up again. wait. Again. Are you saying the bee stung him in exactly the same spot? Is that the chances of that can't be? I know, literally. This time, the bee flew in his helmet, took his helmet off. Wasn't in his helmet, did this with his hair, thought it was gone, helmet back on, and the bee somehow crawled out from his helmet, got him right here on the forehead again. Oh, my God. But um, this time it happened in the afternoon, so it was a little bit better because we got to the ER fast, and they got medicine in, so only one eye swelled shut. And then... Um, does he, does he aller Is he allergic to bees? Yeah, did pretty bad. That? Yeah, oh, pretty shit. bad. So he's... he's um. This time, though, like the last time he got stung and then he wasn't swollen and he went to bed and we didn't know he was it was going to swell up. Right. So he had all night with no medicine. Um, wow. This time we got we got to it pretty fast. Yeah, you can check it, dude. Oh, my God. 
That's that's the good. Dude, that's gnarly. That's the good one. The other yeah. I saw the one before. It was woof. Somebody thought. I guess somebody thought it would be funny to run over the cones beside the finish line tabletop. Oh, the ones that have the big giant metal stakes oh in them. Oh my god! Did they? Yeah, dude. They wow. They snapped both metal stakes. Snapped them off. Their car. Their whatever they were driving had the to whatever, be whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what hit it. But I don't holy. know what car hit it, but whatever hit it did some. I guarantee it tore some shit up underneath. Had to because those yeah. sticks were driven in hard, and yeah. they had to have hit it at speed. Yeah, because if you would have done it, if if they would have hit it slow, it would have stopped the car. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I love that they didn't come back and complain. I know, <laughs> dude. There was just two. There was just two pieces of metal laying there, and the cones were all on the side. Yeah. And I was like, "Yep." Yeah, I know exactly what wow. happened there. That wrecked exactly. that. Yeah. For sure wrecked the car. Oh, dude, somebody's standard <laughs> carriage is not happy. So yeah. So now do you have to give me my legals to where you're like, you know, anything you can say will be used against you in a court of law? Any, anything you say that could be embarrassing, I will not edit out. <laughs> <laughs> 